Hello everybody, my name is Potti Olestam and I am a video game and modern art music composer from Sweden, currently living on Garrigal land here in Greater Sydney, Australia. Most of you know me from the music of Valheim, which a lot of you have been listening to for quite a number of hours and enjoying, and that has made me quite happy. I've wanted for quite some time to make videos for YouTube to talk about my thoughts and experiences that I bring to composing music for video games, tips and tricks, orchestrational things, which instruments to choose, and just general interesting things and thoughts around music. But I haven't made any previous videos for YouTube and it's a quite a new endeavor and I've noticed it's a fun challenge and mad props go out to all of the YouTube content creators out there that make absolutely fantastic videos that are just so enjoyable and so well made. So in order to get into the game and learn how it is to make good videos, I thought I would start off with something a bit easier before making the Valheim videos so that I can make really good content that you all will enjoy. I wanted to start off talking about a project that me and my close friend and colleague Molin Hawkinson worked on a number of years ago. The game's called Legends of Libra or Legends of Libra. We were never really sure what it was during the project. So there will be quite a number of inconsistencies within the following video that some of you will notice about how it's pronounced. But that's just part of the fun. Marlon and I run a company called Solid Sounds and we do music composition, sound design, voiceover, recording and production for video games and a couple of multimedia projects. And I thought that would be a really fun project to get to talk about. And one of the things that worked really well in this project is that we worked with a software called Elias Software, which is sort of like a DAW, but within a video game engine like Unreal Engine or Unity. And it makes a lot of things really easy to do because you can visualize and conceptualize and make changes to the music that is sort of similar to how you would work with the music like you used to in your DAW. And it also handles how music changes from one part to the next and between different themes. And you can just set all that from the start and then it will behave the same way in the video game, which is quite nice. I was introduced to Alaya software a number of years ago, working on a game called Lake Ridden. So I've been working with this software for a number of years and been immensely happy with how it has worked. I had no affiliation with the company during all that time, but it should be said that this video is made possible by the sponsorship of Elias Software. So let's get into it. Here is the breakdown of how we work with the music for Legends of Libra or Legends of Libra. You can choose for yourself. What we found out at the beginning of the project uh, and what we knew sort of going in was that we knew that it was going to be a game with several different styles of levels and new ones, new styles of levels reskins, you could call them, uh, were going to be able to be added to the game in the future. And we needed a musical framework that would help with this, that would make it seamlessly integratable and also quick to do new things because sometimes, uh, especially with these games, deadlines can be very short and you need to be efficient. And that was a fun little challenge. We needed to create sort of a style for every level that we could use as a blueprint for reorchestrating things. Second one, there were going to be a couple of mini bosses and bosses within the game. So we needed to develop a blueprint for them as well. Thirdly, every level section was going to be represented on the menu as well. And so we needed a menu theme that was reorchestratable for every level. And these three pillars of Legends of Libra were things that we had worked on previously with another app game called Fluffy Jump, in which we had one theme for all the levels and then we reorchestrated it for the different levels. So you had a familiarity with the melodies and the way it sounded, but it was all changeable and tweakable which instruments we used for every level. That also sped up the process, not having to do new things every time. Elias, the basic premise is being like a DAW, but in the video game engine. It does a lot of things behind the scenes to make changes between different musical numbers, pieces, styles, as seamless as possible. The way we work with Elias on these levels was that we wanted four different levels of music that we could change between. Usually a world would have a main theme and then you had more higher intensity versions like a second level intensity version and a third level intensity version as you got longer and longer through the level. There was also an ambient version because there were going to be a couple of tile sets that were just a static screen. There were no enemies on it and you got either nothing happened on it or you got a little present or a bonus or a power up on it. Because of different changes that we made, the main level theme ended up being level two of everyone. I'm going to show you that here.
Melody number two was the start of the theme. And the way I composed it was that I had no melody, only percussion. I think percussion is such a, I'm a percussion player myself uh, as well. And I love the way that percussion can put you in a scene very subtly. And so being a more jungle themed level, I thought that I want to set the scene with the help of percussion. So as the theme progresses to its second dynamic level, level number three in Elias, I add a melody and timpani. Timpani is mainly there to work as a bass driver, which sort of means that we get a little bit of a feeling of chords as well with a couple of other instruments in there, but it's mainly the timpani, the bass, and a melody that is added to the theme. reach the third level of intensity for the jungle level in which I add even more percussion to build it up. That's the style that we've developed that's going to be used for all the other levels. Starting off with percussion, adding more melody and adding more percussion, maybe another counter melody. And so we get to the second level, which is the desert level. It starts with no theme, no melody. It's just percussion. Same here, trying to set what instruments really invite you to feel like desert world immediately. I'm very inspired by the composer Yoko Kano. She said that within the first seven seconds, you need to have established where you are and what feel you're going for. It has to be evident very quickly. And I think that's very smart doing that with, the, with a certain type of game. So with the first level, there's only percussion. It sounds like this. On the second dynamic level, we add a flute melody and we add percussion bells as a little bit of a signifier that stuff has happened. do a B melody to the flute that worked with a string orchestra. So it's a lot of tutti uh, strings playing the same theme. The third level that we worked on is uh, the ice cave. And this is a theme that was initially developed by my colleague Marlene Håkansson. This is made in a bit of a shorter way. It's longer theme, but it's shorter in the amount of dynamic levels. Because at this point, you know what the game works for, and we're going to kick up a bit more energy quicker. So there's quite a lot of energy when you start off with the, the main theme. It goes between this beat that has a beat with a melody that starts immediately, and then the second one, which is more of a synth bassy line that helps to drive the tempo and the game forward. There's also a B part with a 16 note disco-ish like drum pattern that helps to push that forward. Now onto boss music. Here I want to do something very different. I'm a big fan of, of Meshuggah's music and through Meshuggah I heard about Tigran Hamasian, which I think does absolutely amazing things that is so in the vernacular, in the language of music that I've grown up with. I love Dream Theatre's music, love Meshuggah, I love odd time meter things. And what Tigran does is just Mm, so nice. And with that folk music flavor, I love folk music. And for, for those of you who know the Valheim soundtrack, there's a fair amount of Swedish folk music influences in there as well. But I made a main boss theme with sort of a Tigran Hamasian piano style arpeggiation on top. This was also something that we could reorchestrate afterwards so it fits for every level. So the main theme with the piano is for the main bosses of every 
chapter of every level. But the mini bosses, their themes is the boss theme reorchestrated with the instruments of that specific level. So taking the, the timpani and the instruments used in the jungle level for that specific mini boss and using more flute and string orchestra and Middle Eastern inspired percussion for the second level. For the third level, using more synthy instruments and more driving basses for the mini boss theme there. One thing that didn't exist at the beginning of the project that was added later was battle modes. And battle modes is more of a wave-based addition where you go into a new level and there'll be heaps of different enemies spawning in after you've killed each wave. So more energetic music was needed for this because the, the initial music was made for a slower playing style. For some of them, we chose to just take the theme that was there initially, if it worked, and just play it faster with a couple of tweaks to the orchestration. For some, a faster version of it didn't work. It felt contrived. It felt like it was just comical that it was playing so much faster, so we had to reorchestrate it. So thank you so much for listening to this little presentation of how we worked with the music for Legends of Libra and using uh, Elias software and working through the Unity engine when we did this game. I'm hoping to soon start up making some little interesting videos about the Valheim music. So I'm looking forward to coming back to that soon. I won't post a date for that because I know that this is still very new for me and I'm a bit slow with the whole video editing. It's the first time for me. And I want to make something that's good. I want to make something that's enjoyable for you and for me. But it will come. Uh, keep your eyes peeled on Twitter or here on YouTube. Thank you all for watching and listening. It's been an absolute treat to get to talk to you about music. It is the best thing ever. I love music. I love composing. And I hope to show you more in the future. Tack så jättemycket. Hoppas ni alla har en jättetrevlig dag. Hej då!